Good morning. Um, I forgot my phone today, so I'm just making this video um, on a Chromebook. So it might be less clear, but whatever. So you guys are going to have to read the short story, The Sniper, okay, by uh, Liam O'Flattery. And so basically what you'll see on your doc is the first one, you're just making a prediction about like what you think is going to happen with the title. Okay, so what can we infer if it's called The Sniper? The story might involve a sniper. Um, so try and like go more in depth of like, what do you predict will come about with this story or who is it about, etc. On the first page, okay, you'll have these words in this chart. You're not defining the words though. You are giving synonyms. So at least two synonyms for each word, okay? And then you'll see um, your annotating instructions, okay? So you're just highlighting um, so on the actual story on your doc, you can just highlight, like you should know how to do that on docs. Um, so orange, right, is figurative language. So similes, metaphors, imagery, symbolism, foreshadowing. Those are like the main five you'll see in this story. Okay. If you wanted to make a margin note and just differentiate, like this is a simile. I'm highlighting this for metaphor. I'm highlighting this for imagery. That would be very helpful. Um, Blue is character, okay? So in this story, there's some really great character uh, bits, right? And just remember, don't think about just the physical description. Think about who are they as a person, what personality traits do they exhibit? Green is setting. And so again, for setting, go beyond the literal, right? Why is this important to the story? Why is this description of setting important to the story? And then you're gonna put stars or in pink, highlight in pink next to pivotal moments. So moments that are like important to the story that signify like a big change or discovery. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go through my annotations that I've made for this story. So if you haven't yet, what I would do now is go and read the story on your own, annotate it like yourself as best you can, and then come back to this video and you can go over it with me and see if you got the ones I said or if there's any that you like missed. Okay, so do that now. Pause for pause. Okay, so obviously right off the bat in this story, we have setting, okay? Um, long June twilight faded into night, Dublin lay enveloped in darkness. So we're getting um, a place, okay? That's important to the story. So maybe look up, like, where is Dublin? Like, what's going on? Um, and then the imagery, right? The fleecy clouds casting pale light. So it's creating that image in your mind. You can see this scene developing, okay? Um, more setting. And then Republicans and free staters were waging civil war. So that's really important because now we know who is, like, battling each other, who is fighting. Um, and a simile there. Machine guns and rifles broke the silence of the night uh, spasmically like dogs barking on lone farms. So again, it's a great simile to show um, how it this break, the silence is being broken by the sounds of dogs barking. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a metaphor in the second paragraph. His face was the face of a student, right? So comparing him almost like to like a younger man. And then we have some physical description of him. So for blue, right, um, his eyes had the cold gleam of a fanatic. They were deep and thoughtful, the eyes of a man who is used to looking at death. So then we know, too, that he's, like, used to fighting um, fanatic. He's a bit, like, intense. Okay, so we're learning about his personality there. On the third paragraph, um, he's eating hungrily because he's not eating since this morning. So we know he's been like really busy. He had been too excited to eat. So he's an intense individual, right? He's so invested in what he's doing that he like forgets to eat. Like he takes over that need to eat because of he's so involved in what he's doing. When it says like he paused for a moment considering whether he should risk a smoke, it was dangerous. So he is thoughtful and like considering his options, like should he smoke, should he not smoke? And then he decided to take the risk. So again, is he smoking because he's stressed, 
right? He needs that release. And like, maybe he's a bit of a risk taker, right? Like he's willing to smoke and risk giving away his position. Um, the good imagery of him actually smoking, right? Um, and then almost immediately a bullet flattened itself against the parapet of the roof. The sniper took another whiff and put out the cigarette. He softly, swore softly and crawled away to the left. So we can see this all happening um, intensely. Okay, and then I put a star and a pink right here, right, for there was a flash and a bullet whizzed over his head. So that's a significant moment. He's being shot at. And, like, how is he going to react? Okay, and then some more, like, setting at the bottom, like, of the roof and what it's like. Okay, and then on the top of, like, the second page of text, um, some more kind of, like, setting or, like, what's happening. There are armored cars coming. Um, and it's describing his heart beating faster. So then that tells us, too, that he's, like, nervous. He's anxious. Oh, what's going on? Okay, so that's character. So you should have that in blue. And then a really nice metaphor for the car, right? Um, he wanted to fire, but he knew it was useless. His bullets would never pierce the steel that covered the gray monster. So comparing the car to a gray monster. Uh, the next paragraph... There's like the side street. So again, like kind of some setting. There's an old woman and her head covered in a tattered shawl. So again, like some imagery there. So orange. Um, she, you can tell that she's, you know, maybe struggling. But she was pointing to the roof where the sniper lay, an informer. So this old woman isn't so like innocent. She's informing them of like where certain people are hiding where the snipers are hiding so maybe she's wearing that shawl too to be deceptive to be like i'm just a poor old woman and really she's like shoot him he's right there okay um and then the woman is shot right so again i put that for another like pivotal moment okay so you could highlight that in pink um like the woman whirled around and fell with a shriek into the gutter so that's a pivotal moment like they're killing it doesn't matter who you are woman children whatever if you're maybe an informant you're going to be shot and so the opposite roof, so some setting there, uh, more a shot rang out. The sniper dropped his rifle with a curse. The rifle clattered to the roof. The sniper thought the noise would wake the dead. So again, that would be a hyperbole because can a noise wake the dead? No. Okay, so that's kind of like halfway down here, right? Um, and then he says, I'm hit, he muttered. And so he crawls back. He has blood oozing. So that imagery of the blood oozing. Um, there was no pain, just a deadened sensation as if the arm had been cut off. Okay, so again, the simile there, like as if the arm had been cut off. And we see he's kind of reacting to this like calmly. So again, that's like his character. Like he's not like, ah! he's kind of like, oh, dang. <laughs> um, and he acts quickly, right? He drew the knife from his pocket, rips open his sleeve. There's a small hole. So again, that imagery of him describing his bullet wound, so orange in there. But his arm bent back easily. He ground his teeth to overcome the pain. So again, he's not crying out in pain because he doesn't want to give away his position. So he prioritizes um, like his job over what he's um, suffering from. Okay, and then how he like he dresses his own wound, like he medicates himself, wraps it up, ties it with his teeth. So he's a tough guy, right? He is. This isn't for the faint of heart, this type of, like, job. And then the imagery there, too, though, of him, like, cleaning it up, right? Um, very clear image in your mind. And then he lay against the parapet and, closing his eyes, made an effort of will to overcome the pain. So he's, like, willing himself to, like, not feel anything. Like, doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt. So, again, that's sh his character showing us he's, like, a strong guy. He's a tough guy. He can handle this. Um, at the bottom there, like the street is still, so some kind of like setting, like showing that it's quiet again, um, with the machine gunner's head hanging lifeless over the turret. So again, that imagery of someone that's deceased. Okay, on page three of the text, um, and the woman's corpse lay still in the gutter. I put that for setting because it is like important to see that this is like a war zone and this poor woman is just like lying dead in the street. Nothing's, no one's like helping her. 
Um, the sniper lay still for a long time, nursing his wounded arm and planning escape. So that's telling us for his character, like he can think in stressful situations. He's not going to just like give up. Even though he's been shot, he's like planning what to do. And then we see some personification. Mourning must not find him wounded on the roof. So mourning too is like metaphor for like another person that like are his enemy. But like mourning itself, the quality can't find somebody. So it could be a personification and a metaphor. And then he's like thinking about what he will do. And then he thinks of a plan. Okay, so again, that's telling us that he can concentrate in stressful situations and he's not going to give up. Um, some more like setting there in that third part. Um, and some imagery, right? He left his hand hanging over the roof lifelessly. So again, he's being very clever, acting like he's killed and he's pretending to be dead. Um, and then crawling quickly to his feet, he peered up at the corner of the roof. His ruse had succeeded. So he's smart. He's planned this unique plan um, to pretend he's like dead to draw attention and then maybe end up killing somebody. Um, and then that paragraph now, like he was now standing before a row of chimney pots looking across with his head clearly silhouetted against the western sky. So he sees the other sniper, just the silhouette though of them. And he can't see who it is. So this is kind of foreshadowing, right? Like if uh, once you know the end of the story, you can come back and highlight this because you know it's foreshadowing. If you can't really see clearly who it is, but all he knows is this is enemy. Um, the Republican sniper smiled and lifted his revolver above the edge of the parapet. The distance was about 50 yards, a hard shot in the dim light, and his right arm was painting him like a thousand devils. So nice simile there. He took steady aim. His hand trembled with eagerness. So again, that's telling us he's excited to shoot. He's excited to kill. That's like his personality. He's just like, oh my gosh, yes. Like going to get them. Um, and then his arm shook with the recoil. He shoots him. When the smoke cleared, he cleared, peered across and uttered a cry of joy. So again, if you're crying with joy after you just shot somebody, you're happy they're dead. You have no remorse. So he's very much invested in like war. Like he's happy to kill. Um, another simile there. He struggled to keep his feet, but he was slowly falling forward as if in a dream. Okay, so with the excitement of killing someone, the pain of his arm. And then the rifle fell from his grasp it fell over bounded at the pole of the barbershop beneath clattered on the pavement some more setting there like you can see it's like a common street if there's a barbershop like they're not in like a battlefield they're in like a community um i've starred this too as well because obviously it's important with um then the dying man on the roof crumpled up and fell forward the body turned over and over in space and hit the ground with a dull thud then it lay still so imagery too, but obviously we know that's important for later or an important moment. Like he's had success, he's killed this man, and he's dead. Um, so the sniper looked at his enemy falling, and then he shuddered. The lust of battle died in him. So again, it's like that excitement and love of fighting and battle and killing is kind of dying now that he sees this man um, fall. And he became bitten by remorse. Great line. And that's personification as well. Obviously, remorse cannot physically bite you. But what it means, it's like he's been infected with remorse, like a vampire bite, right? And now he feels empathy. He feels sadness. He feels remorse for what he's done. Um, the excitement and the, yeah, I killed him, of the war is now leaving him after he sees this man be disintegrated into nothing from him killing him. The sweat stood out in beads on his forehead. Beautiful imagery there. We can tell it's like intense. He's feeling stressed. He's sweating. Weakened by his wound in the long summer day of fasting and watching the roof. So again, I highlight that for character because that shows he's a very dedicated sniper to what he's doing, right? He was, wasn't eating. He was so focused on his job. And he revolted from the sight of the shattered mass um, of his enemy, dead enemy. So again, if you're revolted at the site, like you're disgusted with yourself and with this body, like he's not maybe as tough as a sniper as we earlier thought, right? Or now he's like feeling that remorse and isn't happy to see what he's done. Okay, in the last page of the story, 
Um, his teeth chattered. He began to gibber to himself, cursing the war, cursing himself, cursing everybody. So now we're seeing he doesn't enjoy what he's doing. He doesn't enjoy war. He hates it. He's cursing it. He's cursing everyone involved, cursing himself. This war, like, why do we have to have war? I don't like what I'm doing. Um, and then he looked at his gun in his hand, and with an oath, he hurled it to the roof at his feet. So he's making an oath almost to like never use it again or never shoot somebody or never kill. And he throws it down. So we see a change almost from this like dedicated man who loved to kill. And now he's remorseful and regretting and like vowing never to kill again. Um, the revolver went off with a concussion and the bullet whizzed past the sniper's head. He was frightened back to his senses by the shock. He is nerve steady. The cloud of fear, so cloud of fear would be a metaphor, scattered from his mind and he laughed. So he throws on the gun and it goes off and he's kind of like, whoa, and he's taking it back and he like, he's like, oh my gosh, and kind of laughs because he's like shocked or like scared. And that cloud of fear, right? So seeing fear as a cloud above your head, comparing it to a cloud, be a metaphor. And then he takes some whiskey. So it's kind of like drinking to feel better to subside his emotions or maybe it's giving him like more confidence to be more reckless because it says he felt reckless under the influence of the spirit so under the influence of drinking of alcohol which none of you know about i'm sure but he kind of feels like empowered to um be more bold and reckless with his actions so we decide to leave the roof now and look for his company commander to report. So he does his duty. That's telling us for his character. He follows the rules. He follows his duty. He's done his deed. Now he has to find like his group, his company, right? So in war, a company is kind of like who you are typically with and who you're fighting with. So he's looking for his commander to report back. And then we have some more setting, right? The skylight to the house underneath goes to the laneway to street level. So again, we're like in civilized territory. And then he felt a sudden curiosity to identify who he's killed. Um, so he's curious. And then he describes like what a good shot this sniper was, whoever he was. So they had that in common. Um, and so he's like, oh, I kind of appreciate this guy's efforts. Like he did a good job. Like I want to see who I killed. Um, and he wondered, did he know him? Perhaps he had been in his own company before the split in the army. So perhaps they had been on the same side at one point before the army split. Hmm. Um, and again, he's a risk taker. So just like earlier with a cigarette, he's still a risk taker. He decided to risk going over to have a look at him. He peered around the corner into O'Connell Street. In the upper part of the street, there was, uh, was heavy furring, but all around here was quiet. So this consistent setting of like the quiet and only kind of hearing the odd gunshot like in war. So it's very like, Stealthy, secretive. The sniper darted across the street. A machine gun tore up the ground around him with a hail of bullets. Okay, so figurative language there. Um, metaphor, right? Describing the bullets like hail. But he escaped. He threw himself face downward beside the corpse. The machine gun stopped. So again, huge risk. Like he wants to see so badly who he's killed that he's like being shot at and like running across. And then the most pivotal line in the story, the sniper turned over the dead body and looked into his brother's face. <gasps> oh, my God. So we learn that the man he has killed is, in fact, his brother. So they are both excellent snipers. They both had good shots. Maybe they were in the same, um, on the same side. And then when it split, they went their separate ways. And they both kind of, like, were tricking each other. Like, he was a good um sniper and so that could be like how we know they're kind of related but how unfortunate right the message of war like you don't know who you're killing and to kill it takes a toll on you so this man unfortunately has shot and killed his brother and he can never get that back and that's over and so the fact that too it's very symbolic that he like made this oath like threw his gun on the ground like as if he never wanted to kill again and now this will really affect him in the long term that he shot his only brother or a brother. And we know that a lot of people that are in war suffer from like PTSD. Um, and you can kind of see that coming out in this story. Like he likes war and he's like, woohoo, yeah, I'm a sniper, I kill people. But then the effects of it come out afterwards. And we're gonna see that in our, the second story that we do as well. So we'll only do one more story after this one. And then we're gonna move on to Of Mice and Men. So make sure that you have that book 
Um, and I'll do debrief videos like this that you can watch if you're having trouble understanding the content. Okay, so that's the sniper. Hope you liked it. I'll see you guys later. Adios, amigos.